Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon dear students. In this lecture we will be studying the Government of India Act 1919. Government of India Act 1919. The Government of India Act 1919 otherwise came into known as Mondegu Chemsford reforms. Mondegu Chemsford reforms. <coughs> Why was it called Mondegu Chemsford reforms? Because during the passage of this Government of India Act 1919, Mondegu was the Secretary of State for India, Secretary of State for India. James Ford was the Viceroy. That is why the Government of India Act came into known as Mondegu James Ford Reforms. First of all, we will be looking at the circumstances behind the passage of this act. What were the circumstances behind the passage of the Government of India Act or Mondegu Gems for the Reforms? One. alienation of Indian Muslims. As we have studied in previous lecture that Government of India Act 1909 was brought into effect by bringing Muslims and moderates to the side of the British to strengthen British Raj in India. But the different the gulf between Indian Muslims and British widened. For example, in 1911 partition of Bengal was revoked. Partition of Bengal was revoked. It irked or irritated the upper caste Muslims. Why? Lord Carson stated that as one of the reasons for the partition of Bengal was it to create East Bengal and Assam with Dhaka as its capital for the cultural and educational upliftment of the Muslims revocation of the partition of Bengal irked the upper caste Muslims because Bengal was divided by Lord Katsan as he stated for the development of the Muslims. Secondly, in 1912 the British government declined to start a Muslim university at Aligarh. In 1912, the leaders of the Muslims have submitted an application to start a Muslim university in Aligarh. British government rejected it. It also irked the Indian Muslims. In 1913, 
demolition of a mosque demolition of a platform adjacent to mosque in 1913 the british government demolished a platform adjacent to mosque at kanpur in kanpur the british demolished platform adjacent to a mosque it also brought reaction of the muslims against the british administration in india again in balkan wars from 1911 to 1930 in this balkan wars britain and turkey on opposite sides britain did not support turkey the leader of turkey khalifa was considered by the indian muslims as their religious leader this also brought indian muslims against the british administration in india in the balkan wars britain and turkey was on the opposite side it also irritated indian muslims because indian muslims considered the ruler of turkey khalifa as their religious leader then in the first world war in the first world war also britain and turkey was on opposite sides likewise the balkan wars first world war was from 1914 to 1918 in the first world war as well britain and turkey was on opposite side it also enraged the indian muslims because the leader of turkey khalifa was considered as religious leader by the indian muslims through the 1909 government of india act the british tried to strengthen british raj in india by bringing muslims to their side but in practice the wide between indian muslims and the british increased the second reason behind the passage of the government of india act to home rule league in the first reason muslims came against the british administration in india something needed to be done to pacify indian muslims government of india act was seen to pacify these agitating muslims the second reason was two home rule leagues one home rule league the first home rule league was founded by in april 1916 by balagangadhar tilak the second home rule league was founded in september 1916 by ani basant by ani basant these two leaks released intense campaign for swaraj or self rule the second reason was that two home rule leaks were started in india one by balagangadhar tilak second one ani basant the intensely campaigned for self rule or swaraj to be established in india so something needed to be done to pacify these home rule leagues thirdly lucknow session of indian national congress lucknow session of indian national congress in 1916 1916 lucknow session what was the importance of lucknow session of the indian national congress 
we have studied that in the Surat split of 1907, the extremist left from Indian National Congress, the extremist left from Indian National Congress. But at the Lucknow session of the Indian National Congress, the extremists joined with the moderates at the Lucknow session of the Indian National Congress. The importance did not end there. They were also joined by Home Rule Leaguers, Home Rule Leaguers, then All India Muslim League, All India Muslim League. But the enemy of the British became might earlier the moderates and extremists got divided into two. It weakened the national movement against the British. There was no powerful mighty organization to oppose British administration in India. But once the extremists joined the fold of the Indian National Congress, again they were joined by Home Rule Leaguers and All India Muslim League, the enemy of the Britishers became might. Again here also something needed to be done to pacify this group. Fourth reason, during the first world war, first world war was from 1914 to 1918. During the course of the first Indians extended all support in the form of money, men and material. Why did Indians support the Britishers in the first world war? In the hope that by the, Brit the Indians thought that by considering the grand services rendered by the Indians during one of the difficult times of British, immediately after the war was over, some kind of democratic setup would be introduced in India. That is why Indians supported the British in the first world war. The Indians thought that some kind of democratic institutions would be introduced in India once the first world war was over. Their hope was further strengthened by the observation made by Woodrow Wilson about the first world war. He stated that the first world war was waged for the protection of democracy across the globe, protection of democracy, protection of democracy across the world. So, the Indians naturally hoped that immediately after the war, some kind of democratic institutions would be introduced in India. The war was ended in 1918 and the Indians started glamouring for the introduction of the constitutional reforms. These were the reasons behind the introduction of the Government of India Act 1909. So, some kind of constitutional reforms were needed to be introduced to pacify Indian Muslims, Home Rule Leaguers, All India Muslim League, Indian National Congress and those who supported the First World War. Now, the major provisions of the Act. What were the major provisions of the Government of India Act 1919? One, one of the major changes was made in the Executive Council of the Viceroy, Executive Council of Viceroy. What change did 
the Britishers introduced in the Executive Council of Viceroy. Three Indians were appointed. Three Indians were appointed in the Viceroy's Executive Council. The total number of members was six. The total number of members in the Viceroy's Executive Council was six. Out of the six members, three would be Indians. However, three Indians were appointed in the Viceroy's Executive Council. The Indian members were given only lesser portfolios, significance of lesser portfolios. Unimportant departments or portfolios were given to Indian members like education, agriculture or law. Education, agriculture, law, labor and health, these were the portfolios given to Indian members of the Viceroy's Executive Council. The next major change introduced in legislature. What change did British introduce in the legislature? It was for the first time a bicameral legislature was introduced in India. A bicameral legislature was introduced in India. Bicameral legislature means that a legislature consisting of two houses. Unicameral legislature means that it should have only one house. Bicameral legislature should have two houses, which were the two houses, one council of state, council of state. It was the upper house, upper house. Legislative assembly was the lower house. Legislative assembly was the lower house. The council of state was a permanent body. Each member retired at the regular interval of five years. It was a permanent body. Council of state was a permanent body. Each member used to retire at the regular interval of five years. What about the legislative assembly? The tenure of legislative assembly was three years. But it was for the first time a bicameral legislature was created in India by the British. It consisted of two houses, Council of State, it was the upper house, Legislative Assembly was the lower house. Council of State was a permanent body, one third of the members usually to retire at the regular interval of five years, while the tenure of Legislative Assembly was three years. Council of State total number of members was 60. The total number of members Council of State members Legislative Assembly. Legislative Assembly was the lower house. Total number was 60. Out of the total number of 60, 33 elected. The remaining members were nominated. The total number of members in the Council of State or the upper house was 60. Out of the 60 members, 33 were elected and the remaining members were nominated. What about the legislative assembly? The total number of legislative assembly was 145. Out of the 145, 104 elected. Remaining members were nominated.
41 were nominated. The total number of members in the legislative assembly or the lower house was 145. Out of the 145, 104 was elected and the 41 members was 41 members were nominated by the British government. Then as you have been told earlier the number of elected members was 104 out of the 104 members elected 52 from general constituencies Fifty two from general constituencies. Thirty from Muslims. Muslims were given reservation through the Government of India Act nineteen nineteen as well. The first time they were Muslims were given reservation through the Government of India Act nineteen oh nine. It carried the reservation through the Government of India Act nineteen nineteen as well. 2 Sikh. Sikh community was also given reservation through the Government of India Act 1919. Two seats were reserved for the Sikh community. 7 Landholders. Seven landholders. 9 European. for Indian commerce class, Indian commerce community, Indian commerce community. This was a division of the membership in the legislative assembly, 52 general constituencies, 30 Muslims, 2 Sikhs, 7 landholders, 9 European for Indian commerce community. One of the major legislative change introduced at the center was prior sanction of the governor general was required. Governor general for making legislation on the subjects enumerated in the provincial list. for the legislation on the subjects enumerated in the provincial list by the central legislature prior sanction from the governor general was required. So, these were the major changes introduced at the central legislature. Central le what were the major changes introduced at the central legislature? It was for the first time bicameral legislature was introduced. Bicameral Moral legislatures were Council of State and Legislative Assembly. Now, provincial government, before studying the provincial government, another third change introduced at the central was that list system. It was for the first time two lists were drawn up at the center, central list. And the provincial list. We are studying the major changes introduced through the Government of India Act 1999 at the central government list system. It was for the first time two lists were created central list and the provincial list, which were the subjects included in the central list currency telecommunication, defense, foreign affairs, defense, foreign affairs. It means that the subjects affected more than one province were included in the central list. Who would make legislation on the subject? 
included in the central list the central government would make legislation the central government would make legislation on the subjects enumerated in the central list then provincial list land revenue irrigation agriculture local government health education these were the major subjects included in the provincial list which was for the first time two lists were drawn up central list and the provincial list central list consisted of subjects affected more than one province like currency foreign affairs telecommunication defense in the provincial list the main subjects were land revenue irrigation agriculture local government health and education who would make legislation on the subjects enumerated in the provincial list provincial government provincial government would make legislation on the subjects enumerated in the provincial list in addition to legislation on the subjects enumerated in the provincial provincial list and central list there was another power of legislation which came in known as receivery power procedure power means the power to make legislation on the subjects not enumerated not included in the central list or provincial list this power came in known as procedure power procedure power means the power to make legislation on the subjects not enumerated in the central list or provincial list with whom did this power invest governor general or viceroy governor general viceroy viceroy in whom vested the power of receivery receivery power means the power to make legislation on subjects enumerated either in the central list or the provincial list now we look at the major changes introduced at the provincial administration what were the major changes introduced at the provinces a new system of administration was introduced in provinces it came in known as diarchical scheme of administration in provinces a new administrative setup was introduced the new administrative setup came in known as diarchical scheme of administration what do you mean by diarchical scheme of administration under the diarchical scheme of administration introduced in provinces all the subjects of the provincial government got divided into two one reserved subject reserved subjects two transferred subject under the diarchical scheme of administration in provinces all the subjects of the provincial government got divided into two reserved subjects and the transferred subjects reserved subjects included irrigation land revenue industry 
these were the subjects included in the reserved subject. Transferred subjects included local government, health, education and agriculture. These were the nation building subjects. These nation building subjects of local government, health, education and agriculture were included under the category of transferred subject, while irrigation, land revenue and industries were included under the reserved subjects. This division of the provincial government into two heads came into known as diarchical scheme of administration. But this kind of division of provincial subjects into two, that is reserved subjects and transferred subjects came into known as diarchical scheme of administration. Now, we will be looking into how the subjects were administered, reserved subject, in here transferred subject. Reserved subjects were administered governor, below the governor member of executive council of governor member of the executive council of governor governor's executive council secretary this was the administrative setup of the reserved subjects reserved subjects were administered by the governor through the member of the executive council and below them was the secretary. How did transferred subjects administered? Governor, minister, minister was absent in the administration of reserved subject, but in the administration of transferred subjects minister was appointed. Below the minister secretary. This was administrative setup of transferred and reserved subjects. Reserved subjects were administered by the governor, below the governor was member of the governor's executive council, below the member's executive council was the secretary. What about the transferred subject? In transferred subject, governor, below the governor, minister, below the minister was the secretary through which the subjects were administered. This kind of administration came into known as diarchical scheme of administration. Next major change introduced in provinces, provincial legislature. What were the major changes introduced at provincial legislature? In provinces unicameral legislature was introduced. We have seen that at a center a bicameral legislature was introduced, while in provinces a unicameral legislature was introduced it came into known as legislative council. In provinces unicameral legislature was introduced, legislative council was the unicameral legislature. The number of members in the legislative council differed from province to province according to the population. The highest number was in Bengal. The number of members in Bengal Provincial Legislative Council was 140, while in minim, minimum was at Assam, it was 53. A unicameral legislature was introduced at provinces. Legislative Council was the unicameral legislature. The number of members differed from province to province according to population. 
the highest number of members was in Bengal Legislative Council, the number was 140, while in Assam, the number of members in Legislative Council was only 53. Now, coming to election of members to provincial legislature as well as central legislature. There was no universal adult suffrage or universe adult franchise. Only university graduates, university graduates and taxpayers enjoyed right to vote. To. Right to vote was given only university graduates and taxpayers. The right to vote was not based on age. For example, the total population in India was 241.1 million in 1920. Out of the 241.1 million, only 5.3 million enjoyed right to vote. Only 5.3 million enjoyed right to vote. The right to vote was given only 5.3 million persons, which was less than 5 percent of the total population. The total number of population was 241.1 million in 1920, out of which only 5.3 million people enjoyed right to vote. Right to what was based on universal educational qualifications and property qualifications. Only taxpayers and university graduates were given the right to vote. What about women? Women did not contest the election, did not contest the election, nor right to vote. no right to vote. Women were not given either the right to vote nor did they can contest the election. Even in Britain, the right to vote to women was given only in 1918, right to vote to women in Britain, considering the grand services rendered by women to First World War, women were given the right to vote only in 1918, even in Britain. Now, separate electorates was introduced. separate electorates were introduced. As we have seen earlier, the Indian Muslims were given separate electorates or reservation in election in 1909 Government of India Act. It was continued through the Government of India Act 1919 as well. Muslims were given reservation, Sikh, Sikh community, and later it extended to non Brahmins because of the pressure from Justice Party, Indian Christians, Anglo Indians and Europeans were also given reservation. Initially the act did not give reservation to <coughs> non Brahmins, but 
because of the pressure from justice party later non brahmins were given reservation non brahmins later they were given reservation due to pressure from justice party justice party demanded reservation for non brahmins indian christians europeans anglo indians were given reservation through the government of india act 1919 muslims sikh community were given reservation later non brahmins were given reservation because of the pressure from justice party Christ indian christians europeans anglo indians were also given reservation through the government of india act now we are going to make an observation of the act observation of the government of india act observation of the government of india act 1991 we have seen that a new scheme of administration was introduced in provinces it came into known as diarchical scheme of administration diarchical scheme of administration diarchical scheme of administration was a complete failure it was a complete failure it ended in utter failure why did diarchical scheme of administration ended in utter failure because for example land revenue and irrigation land revenue and irrigation which were included reserved subject land revenue and irrigation was introduced under reserved subject while agriculture was a transferred subject land revenue and irrigation were reserved subject agriculture was a transferred subject in practice the agriculture would be promoted only the reserved subjects of land revenue and irrigation worked in close collaboration with agricultural department now under the diarchical scheme of administration introduced through the government of india act 1919 agriculture department was separated a unified action was required unified action of agriculture land revenue and irrigation department were required for the promotion of agriculture now agriculture was a transferred subject land revenue and irrigation were reserved subjects this water tight compartmentalization rendered proper agricultural practice non reality this land revenue irrigation agriculture departments were to be worked in close co cooperation with each other by dividing it into reserved and transferred subjects it was not possible for a unified work among these departments in the transferred subjects there was minister minister in between governor governor minister secretary 
in transferred subject. In reserved subject, governor, member of executive council, governor's executive council, governor's executive council and the secretary. Most of the time, the governor and the secretary used to protect the British in the arrest, because they were appointed and removed by the British government. The minister was elected by the people, minister was there for the protection of Indian interest or the interest of his countrymen who elected a minister. The minister did not have control over the secretary. Most of the time, the governor discussed the matters with the secretary and implemented. Most of the time, the minister was not aware of what was happening in his department. Only when policies and programs came into effect, the minister came into aware of it. Minister did not have any control over the secretary because he was appointed and removed by the British government. Both the governor and secretary they were there for the protection of British interest. Only minister was there for the protection of the Indian interest. Two rival interests were there. So, it did not function properly. Likewise, Anglo even though education was a transferred subject, Anglo Indian education, Anglo Indian education and European education, were not under the education minister not under the minister anglo indian education and european education were kept outside of the power of the minister even though education was a transferred subject third reason was that as you have seen earlier which were the subjects included in the transferred subject? Transferred subject included agriculture, local government, health and education. All these are nation building subjects nation building subjects. Huge money was required for the promotion of these subjects, but all the monies were given to reserved subjects. No money was given to the working of transferred subjects. Transferred subjects included the nation building subjects of agriculture, local government, health and education. Because of all these reasons, the hierarchical scheme of administration ended in utter failure. These were the reasons behind the failure of the hierarchical scheme of administration introduced in provinces through the Government of India Act 1990. Now, we will be looking into how the Government of India Act 1919 helpful to the Indians how did the government of India act 1919 help the Indians one
as you have been told earlier elected members were given majority in the legislature indians were elected to these legislatures these legislatures were made as a powerful platform to criticize the policies of the government the policies of the government were heavily criticized in these legislative bodies these legislative bodies provided a powerful platform for criticizing the policies of the british government two indians got an opportunity to work in a parliamentary setting otherwise indians would not be aware of how to function in a parliamentary setting the indians came into aware of resolutions question hours zero hour calling attention motion non confidence motion parliamentary phraseology and a parliamentary setting to which indians became familiar in these two ways the government of india act 1919 helped the indians responses when the government of india act 1919 was passed the atmosphere of india was not good for accepting the constitutional changes introduced through the government of india act 1919 jalin wala bank massacre which enraged the entire indians and the khilafat issue because of this india was not conducive to accept the constitutional changes introduced through the government of india act 1919 by the british parliament my other questions which are likely to be asked from this topic first question why did diarchy diarchical scheme of administration first question why did diarchical scheme of administration fail the second question explain the importance of the lucknow pact examine the legislative changes introduced it in center and provinces these are the questions which you are expected to answer thank you for watching my class thank you